Dora, thank you for coming. Thank you. Good Sunday. Sorry for the network everyone is complaining about, but at least we can record this session for those who won't be able to, to join in Zoom. Please feel free to, to join us to listen, to take a listen to us on YouTube. Thank you for joining again. We meet here every Sunday, 9.30 a.m., 10.50 a.m. You are all welcome. And um, we just received a, a, a few apologies from Sister Lumbuka. We were, uh, we are told that um, Brother Mutema is working from Chongwe today. He is traveling to Chongwe. They have a training tomorrow. And then um, Mungaela, Dr. Mungaela is traveling to the COP to Chitilabombwe. They have a memorial for their mother. Brother Kunda also sent in an apology through Sister Lumbuka that uh, He's gone in the fields. You know, this is his business. He deals in maize business, corn business. So when he's, when he's planting season and other season, is usually in the field. There's something he's, he's going to do there. Anyhow, we still go on. Moape, I don't know what has happened to Ezra. Sometimes we, take, we want to take note of our own. Is it a network? <clears throat> I haven't yet uh, gotten feedback. Okay, all right. Okay, so those are a few announcements. We can begin unless there are questions. And what happened to George? George, George asked a question and he never followed through with it. Anyway, we'll get to, we'll give him an answer when he, he follows through. But any, if there's any question, any, any addition or anything before I start, I'm giving you that chance, anyone? Are we okay? Are we good to start? Yes, sir. Yeah, all right. Let's 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 go on because I've got a few things to talk about and I want us to, to take note of a few things and begin to, to look at ourselves at, and at our lives because we, we have discovered we are, we are, we are a, a blessed people. We can know, we know what will make us happy, what will make us live a, a fulfilled life here on earth. So I will continue talking to you. I want to be talking to you every day because remember, every Sunday when we come, we need to talk. And as I talk, try to apply that to yourselves, to your lives. Brother Ezra, you are you are welcome. <clears throat> we are waiting for you. I was the, the, the darling because I want us to, to talk, all of us. As usual, I will take my time and it's a dialogue. You can ask questions, you, you can add a few things. But otherwise, feel free and welcome. And please take note that these are not, it's not music. We don't come here to, to listen to music. We come here to listen to life-changing words, life-changing truths, which should begin to be implemented in our lives. We come to talk to ourselves because we need to prepare our minds for the truth. We live in, a, in an environment where we are carried away by, by things which puts us in trouble. The book of Galatians, <clears throat> Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. That's nature. For whatsoever a man soweth, thou shalt also reap. It is what it is. I'm talking to us. Let us listen and let us examine ourselves. Let us reason with each other. Because when you reason and examine yourself and change your ways, Though your sins were red, you'll be as white as wool. Galatians 6 verse 8, continuing, For he that soweth to his flesh 
shall of the flesh reap corruption. He, but he that was to the spirit, the word, the truth, remember, spirit, thy word is spirit, shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. There is life everlasting, there is peace, there is safety in what we are talking about. Saf safety for you, this word brings safety for us. It brings safety for us. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Don't get tired in following the truth. Don't get tired in letting God have his way. So let us, be, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we are, we, are, we are dealing with life the way Paul is putting it. We are dealing with a cause and cause and effect. Life is just like that. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. We are not dealing with punishment per se. When I say these things, I'm not talking about you being punished by God. I want, me, I want you to listen to me. That's why I'll be very slow. We are dealing with a cause and effect. We're not dealing with a punishment per se. We're not dealing with a condition after death or in life in which evil forces take over the life of consciousness of the human being. We're not talking about those punishments of what, Hades or Gehenna. We are not relating to demonology, not to Hades, perpetrated by ghosts and monsters. The word is simply termed or signified that the effects are inherent in their causes. That is what life is. When you begin to understand those simple, small, small things, you begin to live right. You, need, you begin to live in safety. Even in the time of pandemics, you will survive. This just shows that there are rules in the game of life. Life has got rules. There are rules in the game of life, which we need to follow. Rules in creation, rules that cannot be violated. That is the only thing you need. To, all those things you need to know, even when you're in, li in life, you need to do follow the truth because the rules which truth has set cannot be violated. When you violate them, there are consequences. You will realize that even as you grow up. And I think some of you have realized that. And in, uh, uh, in the stages, in the and, uh, long ages of our, our forefathers understood these things in contemplating long ages of contemplation has built these rules into the theological writing of most of the nations of the world. Even the Bible was written through long ages of contemplation. The Jewish culture incorporated the truth in the way they live their lives. These rules are first observed. That's what we say, the things which we tell you are things we have seen, untouched, and lived, and felt. So they are first observed. Our remote ancestors saw, saw them. They did not know what they meant. They will look at these things and observe them. They see that life is, the way life works is like that. At first, they didn't know what they meant, and they did not know why they happened. By, but they learned through thousands of years that things they did had consequences, and that these consequences were more or less inevitable. Consequences are inevitable. You break the rule, the rule will break you. See, they found in those days that the individual who broke the common rules of life suffered. Just like we are finding out now, as a collective, this time, those days, it will be one person sinning. But we have sinned as over 7 billion people. And we see nature is taking us through the consequences of our sins. He suffered not because a divine power looked down on him and punished him. Man, you are, me and you, man, 7,000, over 7,000 billion people are suffering simply because 
we broke the law of cause and effect. James mentioned this to show you that it has got nothing to do with a divine being in the sky. James 1.13 says, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot, tempt, cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. He doesn't do that. <clears throat> but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That's why I said, don't live by your wants, by, your, by what you want. You'll be enticed into temptation and consequences are going to follow you. Then you, you will not understand why. You start to put the blame on a divine entity in the sky. And you know, this law, the cause and effect, it's impersonal. Nothing personal about it. You find rules. You can't go in someone's house. They're watching TV and you enter and you sit down and change the channel and they don't know you. There will be retaliation. This law is, is it's impersonal. It is just. That's why I said the just shall live by his faith. It is just. It cannot be arbitrated. When you break the, the chain of cause and effect, if you disappoint it, no one can come and speak on your behalf. It cannot be arbitrated. You must start living life knowing that. It cannot be changed by almost any process that we can think of. Galatians 2, 6. But of these who seem to be somewhat, Paul is talking about these people who, who live by their want and their need. Now he's explaining how nature lives and how it is, those people don't bother him. He says, uh, Galatians 2, 6, but of these who seem to be somewhat, in close brackets, he says, whatsoever they were, it, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. Open close bracket. For they who seem to be somewhat in, conf in conference added nothing to me. Deuteronomy 32.4, he is the rock. That's nature, truth. His work is perfect. Nature wants to be perfect. So when you bring imperfection in it, it retaliates because it needs to be perfect. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. Everything on earth is judgment. It's not destructive judgment. No. The earth does not want to destroy you. It wants you to be perfect. When you break the law, it break, when you break the law, you suffer the consequences. Next time you do right and you heal the earth. So, for all, all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Actually, actually, therefore, we live in a world in which we have to be thoughtful of what we do if we wish to enjoy the maximum benefits of existence. You have to be thoughtful of what you're doing. If you are going to, to reap the maximum benefits of your existence. That's why you need to be knowledgeable. Knowledgeable, you come to a place where truth is being taught. Because the purpose of knowledge, finally, is to discover what we can do that does not result in trouble. When you have knowledge, you know how to do things which won't take you into trouble. You know how to rightly divide the word, rightly to make right decisions. So if, if knowledge is to discover what we can do, that does not result in, in trouble. Ignorance then, consequently, is the condition of being unaware that what we do has consequences. Isaiah 3.6, the Bible reads, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of, of, the, of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. What is it saying? You cannot make a mistake without getting into some kind of trouble. I'm telling you that and you have to put that in your mind. 
Mistakes have consequences that are unfavorable. The consequences are unfavorable. And we should be teaching our children certain rules to avoid consequences. And that's what I'm doing. I'm teaching you certain rules to avoid consequences. I don't want next time Ezra is in trouble, Moab is in trouble. At least I'm showing you, I'm arming you with understanding, uh, um, you know, understandings which will avoid trouble for you in this world. God wants to reward us, not punish us. Nature wants to, to and how do you, you, you reward someone because they did the right thing. So that's what God wants. He wants to, to reward us, not to punish us. God is impersonal. He has nothing to do with what you want or what you do not want. He's impersonal. He has got nothing to do with what you want or what you don't want. Peter says that. In the book of Acts 10, 34, the Bible reads, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of the truth, he understood after observing and living the truth. He says, of the truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. So everything we do has consequences. But I'm not saying because everything we do has got consequences, then we should stop doing so that we don't suffer consequences. Doing nothing will, will not help us. To do nothing is not a solution. But the solution is to do right, is to do what the truth wants us to do. Because we know nature, our life, Adam in 6,000 years, he has created the world so hard. Every day, we have to work hard, you know, just to, to scrape some peace. He's created the world in such a way that from the moment of birth on, an individual is subject to factors and factions with which he must contend. That's what we wake up and we know we need to contend with factors and factions. He must adjust to a world which perhaps he does not fully appreciate or does not wish to tolerate. You wake up, you don't want to tolerate life anymore, but you need to adjust to that. You need to leave it. It's not, it's, it's not up to you. Like Christ says, let this cup go away from me. Then he realizes it's not what he can tolerate or what he wants. He says, nevertheless, let your will be done. Romans 8, 20. For the creature was made subject to frustration, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. There is hope in this confusion. That's what I always say. Because it is an environment which God saw it dim for us to come and learn and grow. So there's hope. He has a purpose. We are here for one purpose primarily, and that is to grow. I've been singing about this. And I'll keep singing about this until we need until we begin to grow until we don't just hear the word but it begins to be to take implement in our lives so no matter what we think of it this world is a schoolhouse and we need to conform to the rules acts 14 22 paul would do this you'd go around talking the way i'm talking every sunday or every time they met Acts 22, sorry, Acts 14, 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Because God wants to reward us. He doesn't want to punish us. So in this, this schoolhouse, we're calling the world, in this schoolhouse, we are here to learn lessons. We are not here to play games. We're not here to do foolish games on Saturday. We're not here to, to go to keg or game, or, or, I mean, to, to, to the red light district. We're not here to, to, to go to a pub. We're not here to go and fornicate. We're not here to go and do adultery, you know. We are here to learn lessons. And the two practices that are important in our, in, in our educations are as we go on in life, 
Let us adopt these two things I'm showing you. The two, the two practices that are important in our education are, you need to ask yourself a question when you are learning things, even when I'm teaching you. You need to ask yourself, is the education itself correct? What I've been teaching you, Mwate, Brian, Ezra, Sister Lumbuka, what I've been teaching you is the education itself correct? Number one. Number two, have we the courage and to follow it if it is? Is education true? Do we have the courage to, to follow it if it is? So, especially you young men who are growing up, because you've got the whole time, the whole, the whole time to make mistakes. You are, young people should understand that law, cause and effect is not theological. I'm not talking about something the religious people say is theological. He did that so God hit him. No, God doesn't do that. Some, the, in, other, in Asia, they call it karma. It is not, you need to understand that it's not theological. It really has nothing to do with the religious beliefs of people. This has nothing to do with that, what I'm telling you. The truth I teach you has got nothing to do with the religious views of people. That's why I say we are not religious. We are an imaging earthly humanity who are being reborn into the spirit from the physical mind, spiritual mind. So it's, it has nothing to do with the religious beliefs of people. It's part of a complete pattern of life. What I'm teaching you are things which pertain to the pattern of life. It, it rules the, this, this law of cause and effect, rules everyone. It rules the businessman. That's why you see when, when a businessman sacrifices and works hard, they will make their money. It rules the poet. It rules everyone. It governs the doctor and the bishop. It does, it's, we're talking about over 7 billion people living on earth. The things that cause them to be who they are is what we're talking about in this household. So there's no way of blaming this on some vast universal mystery. What we do is the basis of what we are. So what you do to Demwape will, will, will make, will pattern who you are. What you do, Bran, who pattern who you are. And what we do consequently now may have a, a, a relationship of our past. That's why we're always learning to erase the past, not to let the past, the bad things of the past to, 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 to shape what we are now. An individual comes in this life with his past inside him. We have got a past. That's why we have got a household to erase the bad things of the past, which are making us make the same mistakes we've always been making. Therefore, it's the weakness in ourselves that perpetuates the unfinished business of human evolution. Man should have evolved to something very powerful, but the weakness in ourselves is perpetuating the, the unfinished business of human evolution. Until this is fully understood, we cannot control the situation. You can't control your life and you begin to fully understand what I'm talking about and live by it. You continue dying in your mind. First Corinthians 15, 22, for us in Adam all die. Pe people who are in Adam are people who are not fully understanding what we're talking about. So as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. When you've Christ, when you, you are in the spirit, the spirit is the word, is the truth, you begin to emerge and arise in your mind to have a new mind, a new personality. So because of our minds making wrong mistakes in the past, the body is suffering for those mistakes that live in the body. So if an individual has learned a lesson, it does not face it twice. If you are wise, 
We have faced mistakes in the past. I'm telling, I'm, I'm, I'm telling us now, let us not face it twice. Let us learn from it and fix ourselves and go on. Because the truth is resurrecting us from the death of ignorance of our mind. Our minds are dead. We are dead in the mind. Jesus Christ affirmed that. Although all the time when, when we say you rise up from the dead, because you come from a religious background, you think we're talking about you rising up from the six feet deep hole we throw you when your body is dead. And that's what uh, Jesus Christ encountered with uh, the sisters to Lazarus. In the book of John 11, 23, Jesus Christ says, Jesus says unto her, Thy brother shall, shall rise again. Martha says, saith unto him, what we know. For us, we don't understand truth. Martha says, I know that he shall rise again in the, in the resurrection at the last day. But he wasn't talking about that. He was talking, talking about res, res, resurrecting in the mind. Jesus Christ was saying that. 2.5, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Remember, Christ's principle is the truth. The truth is, the is what is resurrecting our minds. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though you are dead, yet shall, shall he live. Even today, you are dead in your mind. When you believe in the truth today, you will live, you will resurrect. The Bible says, 11, 26, he continues and, and says, And whosoever, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Present tense. Will you guys who live and believe in me, well, you will not die. You, you won't be ignorant again. That's why at the end, Christ puts a statement because he knew people were taking the Bible historically. He says, 11, 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Then he, he asks a question. Do you believe what I'm saying? Believeth thou this? Because he knew they didn't understand. So anyhow, we begin to understand those things that we need to rise up and resurrect in our minds. Conscious is something inside an individual that is forever warning against mistakes. You are rising, when you are awake, you're going to have a, a conscious. It's, it will, and every human being has a conscious, by the way. And it's, all, it's forever warning us against mistakes. Warning against compromises of one kind or another. You don't compromise life. The truth, it is what it is. You, you can't sugarcoat it. You can't even, when the truth says there, you can't put that the word thy because it's, it's almost the same. No, you follow instructions the way they're supposed to be. The individual's conscience works best in a society in which consciousness is strong. And this, in our household, we want to, to strengthen our consciousness. Then we know every one of you who's part of us, your conscience will work best in an environment which has the consciousness which is strong. And so, I, I hope this is making sense. It seems almost inevitable that individuals would develop wrong attitudes towards life. That's the problem. They will become desperate. They will become frightened. They will develop hate and there will be terrorism, massacre, civil wars, mutiny, and everything you can think of. But these things are not due to the...